other color theory students, I wanted to make one little video about your transparency effect because um, I've seen in the past that a lot of people seem to think that when you paint something with transparency effect, you just paint it all and then you paint over it with another color. They don't get that the transparency effect is an illusion. It's not actual as it would be, let's say, in a glazing in watercolor. So I wanted to kind of show you real quick how to do a double, and you can do this with your triples as well. Um, not the prettiest colors in the world, but I just wanted to show you kind of the technique here. So you paint the parts that are on the white background that are the original color of the shape, and then you paint that everywhere where they don't overlap so that you can get that out of the way. So I'm going to finish painting my pink shape here. It's all hard edge with a flat brush. And I just wanted to kind of show you so that you don't end up doing what I... I'm putting my arm through the tripod here. So you don't end up doing what happened so many times in the past when students just didn't grasp it, so they just painted it right on top. That's why I think it's a good idea not to uh, do your overlaps until the end. Just do your shapes first. I can't reach it under this tripod. Okay, here's a... I just have to do it like this. I can't reach. But I just wanted to get the idea. So you paint the whole shape that's not overlapped first. And do that on the whole design first. Then, this is what you want to do in the middle. This happens over here on the palette. You decide, what do you want in front? What do you want behind? Do you want more of this green color? Or do you want more of this pink color? Um, I think I'm going to go... I'm going to put... I might just put more green in it. So, my palette knife already has some pink on it. So, I'm going to kind of get rid of the excess and just take the whole thing into this pile. And then as you know, when you're mixing, and the reason we do it flat is because it's a physical process. The more you put all your pressure and physical energy onto the palette, the better it's gonna look. Invariably, when your palette's a mess, your picture's a mess. And see, this way, since you already have both of your paint out there, you can add more or less of it depending on what you want. And the cool thing about this project is you get some very interesting unexpected colors. Especially when you put opposites together or you add white or black or something. That's, no, that's not a bad color, really. Okay. So I'm going to take this color now and, as you know, rinse out your brush, dry it off, and the brush is the delivery system of the new color. Spin and saturate. You don't want any streaks. That really takes away from the technique. If you've got any leftover on there, just pick up a pile that works. I'm not mixing the pile. I'm just making sure there's no leftover paint on my brush. Could have rinsed it a little better. But I just wanted to show you this so that you can visually see that when you mix them and place them in that area, that's how you get the illusion of transparency. And if you can get rid of your pencil lines too, that helps a lot. That's why it's good to do a lot of layers if you need to to cover those lines. I didn't anticipate working around this tripod. But once you see a visual, sometimes it makes more sense. Because the idea that transparency is actual isn't the case. So that's the process. I just wanted to show you. And if I don't want it, I can put more or less of the color, or I can change the color altogether. But the key is to do your shapes first, and then come back and do the mixing.